All right, how's it going everybody? It's your host Aku here and welcome to a brand new let's play that's happening on the channel and that is Ape Escape. Uh, I know I've made a, a couple, I made like an announcement like back when I made the update video and this was actually one of the pod, upcoming projects that I plan to do because to be frank, uh, I did mention uh, that this was supposed to be one of my childhood games that I used to play when I was very young. Um, so I used to play this quite a bit, but I've never got to finish it. Um, actually the, when the PlayStation was given to, well actually it was mainly my sister at the time, but I, I remember playing on a few occasions when my, my sister used to go to school at the time. Um, she was like, she was like one grade ahead of me at the time. Um, but anyways, um, I wanted to be able to play through this game for, for quite some time and actually this is also because I want to eventually get into the other other of the Ape Escape games in, the, in that series. You know, I know there's two, three, I know there's Sorrow People 2001, there's a million monkeys in it, I think like Ape Escape Big Mission or some shit. So, um... However, um, this was the only Ape Escape that I'm very familiar with. And um, I remember this, you know, having this vibe of like this cheesy Saturday morning cartoon kind of shit. So that's why I kind of really like it. And um, I've actually practiced this a little bit. And, you know, making sure how the controls work at the time. Because if what I remember, uh, this was the only game that required the analog dual shock. And I think when this game was released at the time, they, um, I think that it was bundled with the analog stick because if you were called the original PlayStation controller, I don't think it had a joysticks at all. I think it simply had like the usual four buttons and then the D pad, um, for what I remember. So, how about let's not go any further here <laughs> with this explanation and just really start with the game. And what about the future? Yeah, we'll keep talking because I'm going first. That's not fair. Hey, Professor! Spike, Jake, over here, watch out. Spike, the time station! <laughs> no, no, run you two! actually works. We did it, Natalie. We did it. The time station is complete. We don't have time for celebrating. We've got to do something. Spike, can you hear me? You must listen carefully. Something awful has happened. There's been an accident. The time station has been activated by Spectre and you're being transported back in time. You'll soon arrive in the lost land when dinosaurs roam the earth. Spectre has sent the apes back in time to try to change the course of history. His plans for world domination have begun. And if we don't stop the apes, history will be changed forever. You're our only chance. Two of my gadget inventions, the Stun Club and the Time Net, were also caught in the transport. 
I want you to use them to catch the apes and send them back here. The stun club can be used to defend yourself against attackers. And when you use it on the apes, they'll be stunned. And you'll have an extra second to catch them with a the time net. There isn't time for any monkey business, Spike. Our fate is in your hands. We're depending on you. Be careful. Ah, the, the cheesy pun there. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, um, I didn't really want to say much about the plot because I feel like the game itself is like very self-explanatory with what's going on. And uh, I think it, it does a pretty good job with that. So, uh, but in case if you do want me to like reiterate, uh, apparently me and my supposed best friends were trapped being back in time. Uh, because of Spectre in the Army of Monkeys, and now it's up to me, as Spike, to capture the monkeys and send them back in time and shit. And that's pretty much the whole jest! Alright. I... There we go. So yeah, you can use the stun club to just stun the monkeys, but it it's also good to use it for to attack like any monsters around here. So I believe there is also a spectre coin. Here we go. So anyways, I think for this playthrough, I am planning to capture all the monkeys. So I know this is practically like mandatory if we want to get to the true ending because I think there's like two endings in the game. The first ending is when um, I think you reach the end for the first time. And then I think the second time is like, you know, oh, we gotta we gotta capture all the remaining monkeys. Um, I'm saying this now because this is this is something that's gonna um we're gonna get into like pretty later on anyways, and since this game is not really very long for what I can tell you, uh this why I have never uh finished it. Thanks, Natalie, or Natsumi, depending on what versions of the game I be playing. <laughs> But I think as you can pretty much tell, um, this is the American version of the game. So I'm gonna read a little bit of this. Oh, welcome to the time station. Everything here will help you with your mission. This room is the warp room. In front of you is the round switch that will take you to the stage select area. Behind you is the red switch will take you to the load save data area, which I'll show you in a sec. Be sure to read the, all the mailbox messages and learn from them. Don't worry, we don't necessarily need- I won't showcase every letterboxes, but yeah, this here is supposed to be where you save your game. So, um, pretty much, you go here, and you practically would start to save your game. That's where you're supposed to, like, save your- your- your games and shit. Um, I'm gonna go for file 2 because why not? Yes, of course I will save my game. Uh, and for those who, who... They're probably gonna ask, yes, I'm using an emulator. Um, <laughs> this is really the only way I could do it at this moment in time. I don't have the means of... Um, I don't really have the means of just... Uh, being able to screen record my games otherwise. I just want to... Ret Turn to the fucking game. Um, how do I return? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to demonstrate the fucking save data. But, um, you know. Let's just jump in here, if any- if anything, so, um... Anyways, what was I saying before? Oh, well, I'll get back to that, um, in a sec. Look what I Got a new gadget. Check it out. This is the water net. Use it when you're underwater. I equipped it with an oxygen meter. I'm sending the new gadget over to you right now. Try it out in the training room. Without training, it will be too dangerous for you to continue on to the next area. Well, good luck and be careful. The best to summarize, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this new water net. <laughs> so, um, oh shit, I thought this- 
I thought this shit like fucking glitched out a little bit. Um, but I'm guessing it might have taken a second. I'm not sure if that also implies for like when playing this authentically. So, uh, the water net. You can use this by means of, like, capturing monkeys, actually. Um, I believe you click the white- the right joystick button. And you release a tent. To dive, you click on the low- you- you click on the left stick button. Um. Believe me, this is- this was how, um... This is how it was um, back in 1999. It was considered really innovative at, for its time. I mean, especially how, if you were to compare it to the Nintendo 64, how the controller worked in that time. So I think technically the... I think the Nintendo 64 did the whole joystick shit first, if I'm assuming. I think it, they might have done that. And then like, um, when the original PlayStation only had like the d-pad but like you know all right so how about we just uh finish up uh getting to this room and we just go back up there we go so uh you just have to like There we go. Oh, I don't know how the fuck I did that. Um, but yeah, the whole practice is that you use it and try to capture monkeys while they're swimming on the water. Um... Here's the exit. You pass. Don't forget that you can swim fast by you pressing the R1 button. You can use the water net anytime in the water. Have fun. Yeah, sure. Anyways, um, I think what I was about to say is that, uh, there's actually, like, interesting regional differences between with the... with the Japanese and the European, because for some reason they share similar, um, differences. Let's go! These similar aspects compared to the US version. Um, for example, the names of the characters are, are slightly different. Oh, you fucker! Fuck! Ah, oh, god damn it! <laughs> and uh, so, for example, um, in the, obviously in the U.S. version, the protagonist's name is Spike, but in the European and Japanese version, he's referred to as Kakeru. And then, like Natalie, I think her Japanese and European names are is Natsumi. Are you fucker? I did not remember having issues with this monkey. Oh, you fucker. Alright, shit. Also, I think the European also had like, um, where the characters practically speaking like have a British accent. I mean, I guess in that. I just find it funny, actually, because, like, that's not the case in you for the U.S. version, you know. Um, that's also kind of like a common trend with, um, with the other two games in the series, which, um, I find it funny. Hi. Hi. Uh, you seem to be quite fidgety, so, uh, let me put you out of your misery. There we go. I always kind of fuck up when trying to use the, both the stun club and try to use the net at the same time quick in a quickly session, but you know. And yes, you can actually like climb on trees. So um, if you want to like go on to higher areas, if that makes any sense. There we go. And cookies. Cookies are your lives and these natural chips, like, is like your currency, sort of. 
I think it's also by means of like they're also just a means of like if you if you collect 100 I think you get wait are they are they supposed to be like currency because the only thing I can recall them being um, useful for is I believe it's one of those oh if you collect a hundred of these every every time you collect a uh, extra life for a deal which I think that's that's really how you go about it you can take cover by pushing the left stick that way this way you can crawl to the monkeys without being noticed this is what I've been trying to do um, all that time but you know I think there are I believe Six monkeys in total, but we're told to capture four. Got the fucker. Oh yeah, I wonder if I can actually like lure this monkey in. Never mind, but. I mean, listen, we easily got the other monkeys. Oh, <laughs> that one is actually at the, on the corner, too. Um, yeah, I think we're going to need a different gadget in order to get up to that higher level. So, um... If you realize, like, you, oh, you can't get reach somewhere for a particular monkey, don't, don't fret. Eventually, you're going to get gadgets later on where you can just... You'll get access to like gadgets later on in the future where you could just um get get to like maybe higher places or or getting to where you can find some of the later monkeys that you can now get access to or something. But yeah, that's just how that's just really how it is. Okay, so um This one's not pretty bad. Um, I think I've once had, I think at one point I had issues, um, at first. Oh yeah, you can also do this. I am a Jedi. Oh, I forgot. Oh, thank God. What do I know? Of course I can. I don't know how the hell did you not, um... How did you not, um... Recognize me? Like, you saw that monkey, like, stared right at me, right? You would think this monkey would have reacted sooner, but no. That's not what was happening here. I don't know, I just find- I found it funny. There we go. Okay, I didn't really need cookies, but okay. Oh yeah! Could I reach this? Oh yes! Oh yes, I could reach this area. There's a monkey here, actually. I There's actually a monkey here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I think they do not expect you to get this monkey earlier on, which it is possible. Oh, look at this poor monkey. Oh, you poor thing. Anyways, um... Oh, that's right, there's also a Spectre coin. There is a Spectre coin. Give me that shit. Because I couldn't find the- find a Spectre coin in the other stages earlier. 
Or at least the previous one, actually. Now, right now, we could just, like, get this monkey now. But I think I want to showcase the T-Rex. Uh, because here's the thing. There, um, I believe there is no boss in this game. I don't think you don't get any bosses with this game. I think it's really just a means of, like, looking... Um, you would have to, like, face off against, like... You would have to, like, be slightly more uh, strategic with what you're trying to go for with these dinosaurs where the monkeys are, like, just... Like, are literally just riding on whatever dinosaurs. Because, well, listen. I mean, listen here. We're, we're basically, um... We're practically back in time. We're in a time where those where freaking dinosaurs existed at the at the time. Not a lie, it kind of makes me want to like replay like fossil fighters or some shit. Knock the motherfucker out, and there we go. We got this monkey. Here we go. Yes. Before you ask, uh, yes, I am aware that you there is another monkey that is just like standing on one of the platforms. But you know, I want to showcase the T Rex. I want to showcase the T Rex and and how this monkey is like riding on it. Um, I think another monkey in the same stage. Um. I believe was also writing uh, is like later in the later on um you get another monkey and it's on the same stage but you have to go to a different area um I think it's also writing on it's writing on another dinosaur I think a uh, triceratops 